Today I'm going to show you how to view your researcher profile and your research impact using the database called Scopus. Scopus is a subscription database from Elsevier, and we do have access to it through the Cook Library. If you're at another institution, please check with your library or your librarian to see if you have access to Scopus. So we're going to start on the Cook Library's homepage, which is libraries.towson.edu. And I'm going to navigate to the Databases button here. And in the upper right-hand corner, I'm going to search for the database called Scopus. And we will access Scopus. I'll need to sign in with my university credentials and here we are. So I'm going to use myself as an example. I'm going to navigate to the Authors button right here and click that. And so I'm going to search with my last name, first initial. And we do that because there could be uh, different ways to index my name. It could be full first name or just an initial or my first initial and my middle initial. So I want to make sure I find myself. I'm just going to leave it open-ended with my first initial. Now this is December 2020. And I'm fairly new to Towson, so it hasn't had a chance to roll over yet. I don't have any new publications with Towson at the moment, so I need to use my previous affiliation. So if you're looking for yourself or someone else and you're not sure, um, make sure you just think about what's their affiliation. My previous affiliation is Johns Hopkins, and I'm going to type that here, and that should help me find myself a little more easily. So I'll click Search. And we will look through, there's 10 author results. These are people who have a C price. And uh, let's see if I can find myself. There I am, number six. So number six is Carrie Price, that's me. It has, uh, this person has 25 publications, was at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. Um, yep, that looks like me. So what I need to do is just click on my name. This confuses people. Uh, just click on your name or the person's name that you're looking for. And we'll be directed to some metrics here. So let me walk you through the top part. We have my affiliation, uh, the Scopus researcher ID, which is a number they assign to authors. I have signed in, I created an account, and I added my ORCID, which is an open researcher contributor ID. And then I also have the chance or the option to edit my profile. I can set alerts to see when new publications come out from this author, who happens to be me. And if there were any problems, if, if I thought that there was another author profile that should be mine, I could write to Scopus and look for these potential author matches. If a publication shows up on my profile that isn't mine, I can also let them know. So there are ways to make corrections if things are showing up and they're incorrect. So let's look at this side here, the metrics overview. Now keep in mind, this is what is indexed in Scopus. So Scopus is a huge multidisciplinary database, health, medicine, social sciences, life sciences, technology, and more. Uh, but it is limited by what's indexed in Scopus. So I have 25 documents. This author has 25 documents with 1,025 citations in 989 documents and an H index of 8. So an easy way to explain the H index means that I have uh, at least eight publications with at least eight or more citations. So then moving along, in the middle we see the graph. So I became a librarian in 2012. I started publishing in 2014, and we've seen that number grow over time. We're currently at the end of 2020, so hopefully 2021 will all start to look a little better. And then on the far right, we see my most contributed topics. So hearing aids and audiology, delirium, and orthopedics and urology. So those are departments that I supported in my previous work. So that makes sense. And then let's look at this section where I can continue to interact with these categories. So right now we're in documents and those are the documents that I have co-authored on. I can look at the entire list here I can export it to a citation manager. I can also see the citing documents, so the 989 documents that have cited publications that I have co-authored. So I could look at those if I needed to. Preprints is fairly new, so those are publications that have not gone through the preprint 
proce the peer review process, and I don't have any of those right now, but you might have some. And then co-authors. So if I click on that, I should see people that I recognize, people that I've worked with and co-authored with, and that's true for me. That should be true for you. And then finally, topics. So we're just seeing again those topics that I've co-authored in, and I can click on any of these numbers to view the documents that have those assigned topics. So that's kind of fun. And then there's a few more things I'd like to show you. Right here, under the graph, we have Analyze Author Output and Citation Overview. So let's look at each of those. I'll click on Analyze Author Output. And here we have what I'd like to call a little dashboard. So I can interact again or, or explore these publications on journals by type, by year, and by subject. So if I click on any of these, they're going to show up here completely interactive. I can click on those. And then down here we have again H index, citations, and my co-authors. Let's go back. And we'll click on Citation Overview. And again, we just see my citations with a graph and some metrics here. So it's kind of a fun way to explore um, yours or someone else's research impact and researcher profile. So I encourage you to reach out to your librarian or to me for help or assistance. I hope this was helpful to you, and thank you for watching.